far. There we go. And uh, right now we are. This guy is like freaking rocket ship. We are determined to break him up. That is a tow, buddy. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> hey, Kokanee Day. Landlocked version of a sockeye salmon. That's our target today. This is Brian Losey and Ian Munson here. Priority One Fishing. Uh, we're going to see if we can catch a few kokanee salmon. So we're here at Strawberry Reservoir, Central Utah, known for some pretty good sized kokanee salmon. Late March, I think. This is probably one of our last ice trips of the season. Late season, early March. Early March. Well, we're getting, getting close to mid March. <laughs> well, yeah. So. Well, we're going to give it a shot. Nonetheless, this lake uh, contains some nice rainbows, some nice cutthroat trout. Yeah, we're going to see if we can give it a little little shot here today. This is a good idea because if the kokanee doesn't pan out, this is always good late. late oh, yeah. Ice yeah. The ladder, so. yeah. yeah. All right, so we're going to cover a few uh, techniques, tips, tactics for uh, kokanee salmon today. Hopefully we uh, uh, get a few on camera here for you. They are really nomadic fish, and this is a very large reservoir. So been quite a few limits coming out of here in the last little while. Yeah. So yeah. So all right. Hopefully we can uh, do that for you today. This is uh, again Brian Losey, Ian Munson, Priority One Fishing. Uh, Mid March, a little bit of ice season. Uh, fanatics, <laughs> or <laughs> what do you call it? <laughs> Shenanigans. All right, Strawberry Reservoir. Stay tuned. Drilling a simple football-filled grid across the expansive amount of water that kokanee have been known to travel around can help you uh, locate these fish as well as stay on top of these fish. Holes that are 10 to 30 feet apart, along with several anglers working in opposite corners of the grid, can help you increase your attraction zones, drawing fish into your bait. A 32-inch medium-powered quick-tip rod is perfect for managing kokanee. Not only can you control the weight of the dodger when you're presenting the bait, but also control the fish when they're changing direction rapidly. Oh, I hope that's a kokanee. Yeah, huh? Yeah. Unless the battery died or something. Yeah, there's a school coming through. Whew. Ian Munson, Priority One Fishing. We're out here early March, well almost mid-March now on Strawberry Reservoir, uh, catching kokanee. First one of the day, we've been catching quite a few cutthroat. Oh gosh, he's squirmy. And you can see how those scales are just falling off once you get them out here. Great eating fish. A couple, hopefully, for the smoker. Yeah. Limit is about four each. We're hoping. Yeah, he was to what about? What about? Real, real close to the cap, about 10, 15 feet under the cap. Maybe, yeah. We're over 80 yep. feet of water right now. And uh, pretty typical. We saw that sun come up now to where we've got a lot of light coming through this ice cap. And uh, primary food source being zooplankton. Kokanee's starting to move up. So we'll see if we can get a few more. We missed that one on, uh, on the camera. I'm camera. Get my GoPro battery died and get that charging. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully one of... A little right, chilly, sunny, kind of deceivingly cold out here, so. <laughs> Okie dokie. Show them that rig there real quick, Ian. Yeah, so this is what we're using. It's basically a flasher, one of the smaller flashers you'd use for 
open water trolling for kokanee. This particular one's got the stickers on both sides, which we prefer for this vertically jigging method rather than uh, yeah. trolling where you're getting, you know, true rotation out of it. Then uh -huh. the sticker doesn't matter as much. Yeah, it looks like you bend it a little bit, right? Yep, that's got a little bend tool fold, um, get a little different action to it when you're jigging. Um, but we've got a braided line right down to that flasher. And then I've got a six pound fluorocarbon little leader here to a uh, small tube jig. This is actually a little uh, glow in the dark one, but it was just kind of what I had. I've been using pink and doing well for the cutthroat earlier. Um, I think it was just more about finding where those kokanee yeah, were and happened yeah, to be true. up higher in the column on that one. So, yeah. Well, let's get back at it. Hopefully, we get that school coming back through again. Now, yes, kokanee sir. will come through pretty fast, right? They, those schools, they just they move constantly, moving through this area. Kind of a broken school pattern, I guess. It's typically what you see under the ice. Four or five fish at a time when they do come in. And gorgeous little fish. It'll be delicious. <laughs> Gotta keep a few of these today. All right. Alright, so we've been on a search and destroy mission for Kokanee. Uh, we got Ian about 100 yards that way, Preston's about 100 yards that way, and we're kind of on the search and destroy uh, part of the mission now to catch more Kokanee. So, so far just the one Kokanee you saw on camera that Ian caught, but we're not giving up yet. We're coming into prime time again for Kokanee. Uh, sun is starting to refract a little different through the ice, and sometimes that gets them going, gets them uh, grouping up a little bit more again. Well, um, let's talk about bait for a minute. So. Fire corn. This is a Potsky fire corn. It's a product of um, shoe peg corn, brine shoe peg corn, and a product built for kokanee, almost specifically. Um, great option. Um, this releases an amino acid. It's irritating to kokanee. Uh, has a great scent and attracted in that. Uh, bright colors like pinks and oranges can do really well for you. And uh, oh, anything from salmon eggs to marshmallows and stuff like that can also produce kokanee. Another popular one is a Berkeley Gulp maggot. Now, the gulp maggots, uh, the pink ones, I like to use the pink ones, Ian's using a natural one. Uh, the gulp product itself, the attractants that are in there, uh, they've been tested out close to 400 times more potent than natural bait, so they really disperse in the water, uh, draw these fish in from a distance. It's more of kind of that, uh, that trigger response. We talk a lot about attraction and trigger and what brings a fish into a bait isn't necessarily what gets a fish to bite the bait. In this uh, scenario, targeting kokanee, we're actually trying to create more of a, an irritation for those kokanee. Uh, we're attracting them and making them angry and uh, just basically slapping them in the face with one of these jigs. <laughs> and then they uh, hopefully hopefully uh, come in and bite it. So uh, stay tuned. We can hopefully get a couple more fish on camera here. And uh, Hopefully it's kokanee, so if not, we'll get a couple cut through it nonetheless. So great fishery, can't say enough about Strawberry Reservoir. Uh, kind of mid, you know, late iced out here. You know, ice will come off the lake often uh, end of April, first part of May, but uh, it starts to deteriorate and takes a long time for it to break up. So this is about the last trip, uh, for us anyways, that you can get out here. Um, <laughs> hopefully it uh, continues to be a good one. I think it will. So stay tuned, Brian Losey, Priority One Fishing. Catching kokanee here on Strawberry Reservoir. There we go. Finally. And we got us a cutthroat. That took a little bit to get that one. <laughs> Beautiful little cutty. It's been about the average today. And away you go. Yep. Well, another great day on the ice. The fishing was a uh... Moderate success. Yeah. Uh, you did catch a kokanee. We caught one kokanee. Target that was the, species. The main goal, right? Yeah, so. target species. Ian caught a kokanee.
And we tried, I mean, uh, you know, <laughs> for uh, taking away what we learned today kind of a thing. Um, you got to cover some some ground you for those, stay mobile for sure. That's for sure. Um, and we moved around quite a bit. We probably saw what three or four other schools that were pretty sure were kokanee. Yeah, um, yeah. Oh, I would say pretty confidently that they were. A ton of small cutthroat um, in the same same area. Mm -hmm. And as expected, um, we did mention that the kokanee may be really high in the water column, just because their food source is uh, zooplankton, mm -hmm. uh, kind of a photo reactive uh, organism essentially. So. Um, yeah, and they were. They were up right around 10 feet, I think is where you caught that one. Uh, yeah, between 10 and 15, somewhere yeah. in that range. And we're about 85 feet of water, 80 feet of water, something like that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's a uh, successful day. I would call it successful. One's not bad. No. Ooh, more next time. A lot of cutthroat, though. <laughs> a lot of uh, cutthroat. Strawberry Reservoir is a phenomenal fishery, so um, if you get a chance to get out here, you got to try this. Uh, ice is going to be good here for probably another two or three weeks. Um, it is melting down, the snow is melting down on top. I mean, travel's great on this right now. Um, it was a balmy like 22, 23 degrees when we pulled up this morning too. So it's still kind of cold up here. Uh, definitely not spring uh, this morning. It felt pretty no. chilly with that, with the W. Uh, it did warm up once <laughs> once the, the wind died down quite uh -huh. a bit. Um, it warmed up pretty good, but now it's cooling back down again. The sun's just about to go behind the mountains. Yep. Um, and I'm sure it'll plummet pretty good. And, yeah, uh, I think we're going to call it a day. We're going to call it a successful day here on Strawberry. Lots of cutthroat, one kokanee, one nice cutthroat. Mm -hmm. We'll have to throw that photo in there for you. Um, I think we got it just in the, the last little clip we did, wasn't it? I hope so. Yeah, something like that. So, <laughs> Great big cutthroat, nice cutthroat. So, so stay tuned. More of these uh, episodes coming your way. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, that's Priority One Fishing. And, uh, like us on Facebook. Like us on Facebook Priority as well, too. Yeah. Um, share our videos. Um, get out there. Get on the hard deck. Before it's gone, it's almost there. Well, pretty soon we'll be doing some ice off stuff. Yeah. Walleye, pre-spawn. It's coming up. A lot of things happening here in the spring. All right. Stay tuned. See you later. Bye.